Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we got a couple of very interesting bodybuilding updates and we are starting with a physique update, or should I say a lower body update of Derek Lansford, who just posted a little training clip of him doing some front squats and also there is a little posing footage, so we can see how his quads are actually progressing. And I believe quads are Derek's biggest problem, and I'll tell you why. But first, let's take a look at this video where he's training, so he's doing front squats, which I believe completely makes sense for this guy, because he's not lacking glutes. He's definitely not lacking glutes, his glutes are amazing on stage, like they're shredded, they're dry, they're developed, I would say the same thing about his hamstrings, what he is lacking is quads. Now, you're probably thinking, well, his quads are not really that bad, and if you take a look at this photo, for example, him against the other guys in the top three, like, his legs, I mean, they're fine, they're not small, they're actually pretty good. Okay, Samson didn't even flex them here, I mean, his are enormous, and Hadi has great quads, like, really separated, really hard, and, like, really big, maybe not perfectly symmetrical, but really good, really big, and in this lineup right here, in this callout, Derek's legs are not looking small, I'm sure you're thinking that, and you would be right. But here's the thing, here's the interesting thing, like this is the photo from 2022 Mr. Olympia, and here you can see that Derek's legs were definitely much smaller than they are today, so he definitely improved them a lot. In 2022, they were like a big disadvantage, if he had better quads, he would have probably won that Mr. Olympia even in 2022. So I think it is pretty safe to say that his quads are genetically his weakest area. As far as the muscle, the actual muscular development, like as far as the tissue where he's lacking the most, it would be his legs, genetically. However, he improved those legs a lot, as you can see right now. He trained really hard, he did a lot of those front squats and stuff like that, and he grew those legs quite a bit. And as you can see right here on stage, they looked good, like they weren't really lagging behind. They were good enough. Compared to his upper body, compared to the other competitors, his quads were good. However, and I do have a point that I want to make, I'm going somewhere with this, so guys stick with me. <laughs> In 2023 off-season, this is what his legs used to look like. And if you guys follow my channel, you probably remember how I was reacting when I was watching these physique update photos. I was saying his legs are now his best body part. Like in 2022 at the Mr. Olympia, they were his weakest. And then in the offseason, I thought he's gonna have legs too big. I was literally saying that. His legs are looking too big right now. They're gonna be disproportionate to the rest of his body. Which apparently wasn't the case in the end. Why? Well, it's because his legs are his weakest body part genetically, he did manage to make them big and full in the off-season, but once he started dieting down, they were the first muscle to go away. In the off-season, his lower body looked bigger than his upper body, but as he was dieting, his upper body didn't go anywhere, it stayed right there. It stayed big and full and everything, and his legs kind of lost a lot of that size. So the point that I'm trying to make is that Derek's legs are his weakest point, and they are not allowing him to push for conditioning even further, because he was soft in the quads, in the chest, in the shoulders, we all know that, and that's because he wasn't able to afford to push for conditioning further, because he would lose too much of that leg fullness, and without the size, he would not beat Hadi again. It would be the same story like 2022, so they decided to keep the leg size as big as possible while getting the conditioning to the point where it's okay. And obviously, Hani Rambod made the right call. Derek did end up winning the show, but we don't know for how long can he keep it unless he brings up that conditioning in the front part. And now that he actually managed to bring up those legs, now if he grows them again, even a little bit more, in this offseason, I think he's probably gonna be able to push for conditioning more because his legs are gonna stay. They don't need to be any bigger than this, and if he makes a little bit more improvements, then he will be able to afford to lose some fullness in the legs in order to get more conditioning in the chest, in the shoulders, and in those quads as well. So him focusing on improving his quads as much as possible, like he's doing right here with his front squats, which are focusing quads mainly, I'm pretty sure that's their strategy, but at this point, 
I don't think he really made a lot of progress in the legs since the Mr. Olympia. He also says in the caption of this video that he hasn't been pushing front squats for like a couple of months and now he's gonna start pushing things again. I'm pretty sure he had a health phase uh, till this point and now he's gonna start pushing things and I'm sure he's gonna blow up right about now in a couple of months. I think his legs are gonna be enormous and if he improves them a little bit more then there will be nothing preventing him from coming in completely conditioned head to toe and i believe this was the only reason he wasn't able to do that all right now we got a really crazy physique update from Gudvito at 10 weeks out of Arnold classic brazil and i mean take a look at this freaking shot right here front double bicep guys guys find me somebody who looks more impressive in this shot who is wider who is thicker who has bigger freaking legs <laughs> especially in proportion to his waist and just the overall size massiveness and now that his hernia is fixed what exactly is preventing good Vito from being like a top five bodybuilder at the mr olympia <laughs> i mean first he needs to win a pro show is he gonna be able to win Brazil, Arnold Classic Brazil, against Horse MD and Rafael Brandao? I mean, this guy is not really proven yet. He only turned pro, never had a pro debut yet. But I believe he absolutely can win a pro debut. I don't think there are many bodybuilders in the world that are better than this guy. I mean, we still have to wait and see. I know all that. But sometimes you can tell based on Instagram photos only. Like, who thought that Horse MD was gonna beat Nathan Diasha and almost beat Behr Stabani and actually challenge Samson Dauda? Like, who expected that? We were all saying Horse MD is an Instagram bodybuilder, but look at him now. Same thing with Rubiel, Nexilla. Who thought he would beat Nathan Diasha? Damn, all these new bros are beating Nathan Diasha. Poor Nathan. But, like, the point is, who thought Nexilla was gonna almost beat Grigio? And I think he actually beat Samson in a couple of poses. I mean, that's arguable, okay, but he was third at Prague Pro after just turning pro the day before. So, you know, sometimes these things happen. Even though these guys are not proven, they can actually do some serious damage in pro shows. And I believe Gudvito is definitely one of those guys. Like, you don't look like this if you're not a top bodybuilder. I dare you guys, find me a photo of a bodybuilder who looks this good in a front double bicep on their Instagram photos, I don't care, like, I don't care how many uh, filters are there or how good the lighting is, like, I don't think Nick Walker looks like this in the front double, or Derek Lansford, or Hadi Chupan, honestly, like, as far as the structure, as far as the proportions and the size, yeah, I mean, he's, he's that good, I think he's that good, we'll see how good his conditioning is, okay, sure, but he's coached by Chris Asito, and Asito, he's the conditioning guy. Like, he always pushes everybody, like, really hard. He's always going, like, really low carb for a long, long time. Everybody's suffering like crazy when they're coached by Asito, and everybody brings good conditioning. Like, everybody brings their best conditioning when they're working with Asito. So, as far as conditioning, I don't think we should worry. I'm pretty sure he's gonna be conditioned enough. And also, I don't think he needs to be super peeled, super shredded. With these proportions, with this shape, with this structure, with this much muscle. He does not need to be super peeled 2% body fat. He doesn't need to. A lot of bodybuilders aren't. I mean, look at Samson. Look at what he's done without ever showcasing shredded glutes and basically being soft overall. When you have the right shape and the structure, when you have the right amount of size, you don't have to be super, super peeled. But I believe he's gonna be conditioned enough, very conditioned, because again, Chris Asito, and why not? I don't think he has like a problem with conditioning. He was never peeled, really peeled on stage, sure, but he never needed to be. He always did really well without being super shredded. So I think this time around for the Iron Classic Brazil, he is going to bring solid conditioning. And with this much muscle and looking like this, I think this guy is winning Brazil, Arnold Classic Brazil, and then he's coming hard to the Mr. Olympia. And yeah, I think this guy is like a top 5 bodybuilder in the world right now. If you guys disagree, just tell me down below. Next, we got a physique update of Hunter Labrada, and he is right now in his health phase, as he says. And this is the way he looks when he's off the juice, 
Is he really? I mean, what does that mean, really, health phase? Is it like a true TRT? Or maybe is it like an average person's blasting cycle? I have no idea, but he looks really good for a guy who is in a health phase. I mean, for his standards, for his off-season look, this is actually looking really good. And as you can see in the caption, his weight right now is 282, so he is big, he is heavy. And he has four more weeks of uh, quote-unquote health phase, and then his off-season actually begins. So if he looks like this in the, in the health phase, how good will he look when his actual off-season starts? I'm really curious to see that. Uh, if it is true what they're saying, he's gonna look so much bigger, so much better once his off-season actually starts. I don't know, man, it's really weird because he still has that hardness and the fullness. Look at the freaking vascularity through the chest and the shoulders and like the body fat percent. Look at the, look at the abs and the glutes as well, the, 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 the quads, the hamstrings. Like he's lean everywhere, plus he's heavy, like 282, and he's really hard and really full. I don't know, it's kind of hard to grasp. I know usually when guys go off, they lose a lot of this, like a lot of this fullness and size. Yeah, I know he's training really hard and he's regimented, but still, still something should happen when you go off. You shouldn't look super full, super hard and super shredded and heavy and big and strong at the same time. Like, you know, it's weird. I don't know what the hell does he mean when he says health phase, but yeah, he definitely doesn't look like he's taking it easy. And also, he included an arm day into his routine, so I think his arms are looking more dominant now, and I think that's a good look. I think he should keep it in, and the show he's gonna do is gonna be later in the year. And yeah, sure, he will qualify for the Mr. Olympia, but I think his best days are behind him. I mean, as far as the placing, I don't think he's ever gonna place top 4 at the Mr. Olympia again. I mean, he does look great in these physique updates, but for some reason on stage, he rarely brings the best of himself. He brought it to Tampa, bro, last year, but that was it. That was the only show he brought it to. Like, at Texas, it wasn't him at his best. Mr. Olympia was even worse. So, like, even if I imagine him bringing that Tampa edition or something even better to the Mr. Olympia stage, still, at this, today's lineup, you know, top four is pretty much impossible. You know, he needs to beat everybody except for Hardy Sampson and Derek Lansford, but there is also Nick Walker, and there is a whole bunch of new guys who are making progress, a lot of progress every year, so... Yeah, I don't imagine Hunter ever being top 4 at the Mr. Olympia again, but sure, I think he can make progress still at certain areas in a certain way. And that's gonna do it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, and if you wanna see more, subscribe to this channel. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. See you soon. All the best, and bye-bye.